right, Top Shelf DIY fans, are you ready to race the roof? Carpet ceiling tutorial coming at ya. Let's go. So just to recap, here's what our living room looked like three months ago, prior to this renovation that was sponsored by the Home Depot. We only have nine foot ceilings, so I wasn't sure if a coffered ceiling would work, but it turned out that it, instead of making the room feel heavy, it actually made the room feel bigger, it made use of the waste space, and we added six additional can lights in the ceiling, so it added a lot of light to the room. Underneath the coffered ceiling are these two by six beams with these little chunky three inch wedges. Now on the sides of that, you'll see one by six, and then eventually on the top of those uh, beams, you'll have one by six boards that will cover up the entire framework. Once everything is wrapped in the one by six boards, then you can add your crown molding to each box of your ceiling. With my SketchUp plans in hand, I knew how much material I needed to order and I also had some electricians come and cut some openings and wire some recessed lighting for the ceiling. So very important, your first beams, the two by six untreated pine I was talking about, you want to put those directly into your ceiling joists, which I have marked here with green tape. The first two, or depending on how many boxes, um, the first few beams that will go all the way across need to go into your joists. And then the adjoining beams, by the way, we used one of those laser levels to kind of mark the ceiling and um, on straight lines. Those will be connected to your main beams with pocket hole joinery and wood screws. Once all those three inch two by six chunks were out, we were ready for trim. Okay, so here's a little close up of what I'm doing. I am actually offsetting these pieces so that they're not resting on the ceiling by about half an inch and I'm gonna have a lip about three quarters of an inch, which is the exact width of one of these one by fours. So what I did was I have a piece clamped and then I just make sure all of these pieces line up with the bottom of this clamped piece. This will come off and then there'll be the exact gap that I'm looking for. Would you stay till the morning light? Or would you follow me? And thus began the process of cutting and coping 36 pieces of crown molding. It was fairly straightforward since they were all 45 degree inside corners, but of course, as you know, with inside corners, you'll need to cope. I started out with a regular coping saw and I was starting to get early arthritis. So I switched to this ankle grinder with a flap disc and it worked amazingly well. For more on how I do my crown molding, I have another tutorial in my list of videos and I will link it here. Standing right here. I know that I told you were over. I swear that I so but just Once the crown was up, I caulked every single seam, filled every single nail hole with wood filler, and then once that was all sanded down, I painted the ceiling in a flat white and the trim in cameo white in a satin finish. And that was a tedious couple of days, but it definitely made a, a big difference. Right, so in full disclosure, we are about a month and a half out and there is a little bit of cracking in areas where I previously filled in with um, wood filler. I'm thinking Bondo is probably the solution, but uh, if you guys have any suggestions, please uh, drop it in the comments because I mean, I want it to look perfect forever, right? <laughs>
All right, guys, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe for more videos like this. And happy building.